guys, this is GTO Technology, and today we'll be covering how to make an anti-grief plugin for Bucket. Um, this tutorial will be in 720p because I found that 1080p is a little bit too large and makes the text kind of hard to read. And also takes a while to, on YouTube, render videos in 1080 sometimes. So, from now on, my tutorials will be in 720, if I can help it. Uh, and so for our anti-grief plugin, we will be... Uh, learning how to iterate through an array and also how to create an array uh, how to ha handle like block events like when it's ignited, when it's broken, when it's placed uh, how to register events and um, just the basics like enabling and disabling the plugin contacting the log stuff like that and it, for starters it may sound a little bit advanced but trust me it's not that bad so without further ado let's get started your requirements will be uh, Eclipse, which is what we'll be using. If you want to try and use NetBeans, uh, you can, but this isn't really made for NetBeans, so you might have some issues. Uh, and you'll also need the Craft Bucket recommended build. I'll go ahead and show you how to get to that. You just go to bucket.org. And right in the top right, you'll see recommended builds. Uh, click on the top one and then right click under build artifacts where it says the jar file click download linked file as and save it in your local server folder if you want to learn how to make a local server click the annotation below it's not that hard you just save this jar like you would the minecraft server jar and then you launch it via terminal uh, or you just double click it so just call it craft bucket dot jar make sure you call it this just for the sake of this tutorial save it in your local server folder override it if it already exists and there you go so without further ado let's get started eclipse go to file new java project we're going to call it anti-grief all right and in the package explorer or project explorer you're going to right click the folder anti-grief and you go to new package we're going to call it me dot your name dot anti grief capital a capital g uh, regarding capitals i'm not going to be able to state every capital letter in this tutorial because it will double if not triple the time it takes me to finish this um just remember to glance over at the screen every now and then because uh capital letters are important in java because it's a case sensitive language and uh, though i can't constantly state which letters capitalized um it's just again important that you see which one is by glancing over at the video occasionally if you're going by listening to this so that you know if you get an error what that error might be because it's probably going to be capitalization so me.geekplayer.antigrief capital A and G press finish right click this new package and go to new class we're going to call it anti-grief again with the capital A and G and right click the package again and make another class we're going to call that my block listener and this is so we have two separate classes and the block listener will be to handle when a block is placed destroyed or ignited and the anti grief will handle the enabling of the plugin the disabling of the plugin and will register the events for when a block is broken placed or ignited you'll see if you don't understand it's not that complex um, First, we're going to state our public variables. So we're going to say public static anti grief plugin. All right. So as you can see, the variable plugin is just short for anti grief, and the type of the variable is anti grief. Uh, I'll explain this a little bit more later on in the tutorial if you're getting lost as to what this actually means. Um, let's go ahead and import our craft bucket jar so that we have a resource for when we call certain special lines of code that normal Java doesn't have. Uh, it'll grab, it'll contact the craft bucket jar. Uh, I'm trying to think of how I can explain this. Uh, something like register event doesn't really exist in Java, but it exists in craft bucket jar. So we refer to craft bucket jar. Uh, to make that work so anyways if you understand you understand the long run also so right click your project in the package explorer go to properties uh, in the sidebar click java build path and in the right choose add external jars 
and from your local server folder choose craftbucket.jar press open alright and press ok and there you go so as you can see under our reference libraries we have craftbucket.jar so that way while we state things that don't normally exist in Java in our project it will reference craftbucket.jar so that the code actually works I know I'm not explaining it too well but next variable will be public final logger logger equals logger dot get logger it's a little bit redundant I know minecraft so you're gonna need to check the capitalization on this because it's a little bit wonky but as you can see logger lowercase l is short for logger dot get logger minecraft so as you can see instead of typing logger dot get logger minecraft uh, we just type logger and you can see how that's a little bit more efficient and saves your time and my time for the sake of this tutorial um, go ahead and import logger when you get that red squiggly just hover over it and press import as you can see it's imported from a resource from Java's default resources and yeah so now that works and you're gonna have to do that frequently in Java unfortunately but that's only because sometimes you can import from multiple sources so it makes sure when you get it just wants to make sure that you're importing it from the right resource here we go again with me not explaining things too well anyway so let's try and just dive in a little bit as to what a variable really is as you can see uh, logger dot get logger minecraft is actually of is like the type of that is logger so we're gonna say logger right here and we're gonna call the variable logger and it's in blue so this is the type in black and the actual name of the variable is in blue which is short for this so uh, you'll kinda catch on to that later on hopefully and we're gonna state our third public variable right now so public final my block listener which is referring to that class we made earlier block listener equals new my block listener in parentheses this finish that off with a semicolon almost every line can be finished off with a semicolon unless it's like an if statement uh, a while loop a for loop or like a a method so I'll probably state for the most part when there's a semicolon or not alright so ignore that error right there it's not important right now it'll fix itself in the long run uh, so block listener is of the type my block listener which is the class right here as you can see and it's short for new my block listener this so now we're gonna handle what will happen when our plugin is disabled so just type plugin void on disable capital D parentheses opening curly bracket I'm just gonna call them brackets for now on because curly bracket I don't know seems like it takes a while to say so public void on disable bracket opening bracket and then closing bracket should automatically do that plugin description file PDF file equals this dot get description so this is just another variable except for it's not public so it doesn't have all that public stuff before it so PDF file is of the type plugin description file and is short for this dot get description go ahead and import plugin description file from bucket by hovering over it and choosing it from the list that appears and then underneath that you're going to type this dot logger dot info parentheses PDF file dot get name plus quotation marks is now disabled as you can see right here we are simply grabbing the name of our plugin from a resource and we're saying is now disabled so that when we change the name of the plugin we don't have to go through here every time and change it also in the disabled message it just grabs it every time so it's constantly updated so this is always accurate and it after that we're gonna say is now disabled so we're just putting a variable within a string and a string generally has quotation marks alright so that's it for the disabled now for the enabling on the next line after closing off the disabled with a closing curly bracket I'm gonna go to public void on enable just like this on disable opening bracket 
And then on our next line, we're going to state the variable PM. So that will be plugin manager PM equals get server dot get plugin manager. We're going to import plugin manager. All right. And there you go. All right. So the reason why we are getting these right here is because of my own fault. We need to extend the Java plugin. So don't worry about what that means. It just means that we need to make sure that these work. So this is right after public class anti grief type extends Java plugin. Import Java plugin, and that will fix these messages right here. Don't worry about this one. All right, so there we go. A few less squigglies to worry about. Uh, our PM variable is of the type plugin manager and is short for get server dot plugin dot sorry get plugin manager. Next line we're gonna register some events. So PM dot register event parentheses event dot type dot block underscore place comma this dot block listener comma event dot priority dot normal comma this closing uh, parentheses and semicolon Let's see don't worry about the uh, red line that you're gonna get on register event that will fix itself just like the uh, one up here the only reason that error is being produced is because there's an error up here and as you can see it refers to the block listener and that's why these two errors are being produced um, so we're going to say, we're going to register the event for when a block is placed, and it's going to contact the block listener. The priority is normal, so it's not really urgent, but uh, it'll work just fine. Don't worry about the actual priority. Just make sure it just says normal. And this, so we're referring to our, uh, this class. All right, so we're going to do that again for when a block is broken. So pm.register event, event.type. Um, dot block break and if you guys get this weird thing where it's like arg1 arg2 just press the tab key and it'll jump to the next argument for you so it's a little bit like a helper it just kind of helps you out and speeds things along a little bit quicker so I'm getting that right now so I'm just gonna press the tab key to jump from one argument to the next so for arg1 we're gonna type this dot block listener tab again or press enter tab uh, event dot priority dot normal just like the one above tab this so as you can see it's just like the line above and just to save time we're just gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it one more time and we're gonna replace the second one we're gonna replace block break with block underscore ignite So there you go, we've registered our three events for when a block is placed, broken, and ignited, and it will contact the block listener class when every, every time that event occurs. Right underneath this, we're going to say, we're just going to copy this right here from on disable the PDF file variable. Just copy that line, paste it in on enable, uh, press the enter key, and we're going to print a message to the log just like we did with the disabled method for when it is enabled. So we're going to say this.logger.info pdf file dot get name just like before plus version plus pdf file dot get version plus parentheses er, uh, quotation marks is enabled. So if you all understand we're just saying when the plugin's enabled it'll print a message to your server log saying <clears throat> uh, anti-grief version whatever version it is so let's say 1.0 is enabled and for disabled it will say anti-grief is now disabled and as you can see we are putting variables within a string so that's what the quotation marks mean quotation marks just let us type normal text and the plus marks let us insert variables within the normal text so that is it for this class uh, sorry if it got confusing I'm not amazing at explaining things I probably should be since I make tutorials but uh, judging from my other videos, hopefully I make enough sense.
people seem to be understanding. I don't see how, but they do. If you don't understand, I'm not blaming you. Just uh, comment in, or leave a comment in the uh, little comments below, and uh, I will try and get back to you. I've been kind of busy lately, but it's Christmas break, so at the moment, so I might actually be able to respond to you pretty fast now. As you can see, we still have some errors here, but we already went over the fact that this will be fixed, which will fix all of these, so don't worry about those errors. If you have a different error, make sure you imported from the right resource, make sure you're capitalized to everything correctly, make sure you're not forgetting a line, make sure you don't make a typo, and uh, that pretty much covers any possible reason. Also make sure the line's finished off with a semicolon if it needs to be. Make sure you're actually using curly brackets and not regular brackets. And uh, uh, the only thing I can see where you could probably make a few errors is the logger.info part. Just remember that we are inserting variables within a string. Strings always have quotation marks. And to insert a variable, you close off the string, put a plus, you put the variable, you put another plus, and then you open up the string again with another quotation mark. I know it's a little bit confusing, but if you look at it and think about it in your own way, because I think about it differently probably, uh, you might grasp the concept. So now that we've finished our main class and we're not touching this ever again, I don't think, we're going to go to our block listener to handle the events that we just registered, which would be the placing and breaking and igniting of a block. So go ahead and double click myblocklistener.java from the package or project explorer on the left. So right here, after public class myblocklistener type extends block listener. All right, import that. Hang on, it might take a few clicks, but uh, you just need to make sure it has that little hand icon for your cursor so that you can click on it. Self-explanatory, but anyway, so save that. And as you can see, these are fixed. And right here, this isn't working quite yet because we haven't stated a certain variable within here. For the sake of time, and uh, for people that are just dropping in, they look at the duration of the video, they don't want to be freaked out by seeing like 20 minutes or something. I'm going to go ahead and cut this off, and we're going to continue this on episode 2. If it's not out yet, it'll come out within the next hour or so. Uh, and uh, it should, and I think that'll probably be the last episode, and it will export the plugin, we'll show it off, and we'll also fill out this class. So thanks for watching. Uh, rate, comment, and subscribe. More importantly, subscribe so that you know when the next episode comes out. Also, I do make bucket plugin tutorials. More than just this. I've made some other ones, and I'm going to make more. I also plan to make some gameplay commentaries. Wow.